Neil from Essex here with part three in our Tractor Buyer's Guide series. Today we're gonna discuss must-have implements. Your tractor at the end of the day is a tool carrier, right? The machine itself isn't really capable of any work without attachments to go on it. And there's a handful of attachments that I think are worth every person considering upfront, mostly because of their versatility and the variety of the tasks that they can accomplish. Probably not a lot of things that you don't even expect here initially. So so today we're going to take a little bit of time, walk around the lot, pick out some of those things that I think you probably shouldn't be without. Now before we start talking attachments, we need to talk about your tractor itself. I've been selling tractors now for 19 years, believe it or not. Um, and even in my 19 years, we've seen the evolution from implements really only going on the rear of your tractor for everything being oriented towards that three-point hitch and much greater support for things going out on your front loader. You're gonna notice on virtually every tractor out here in our parking lot today, you're gonna have a machines that are ex equipped with skid steer quick couplers. That's when you're gonna have two handles on the back here of your loader bucket that I have here with pins that drop down and through the bottom. Now this style of coupler represents probably 90% of the attachments that are out there on the market to go onto your front loader. It's the same coupler that you're gonna find on skid steers and compact track loaders and a lot of competitive machines here. I sell Kubota in New Holland. I'm gonna have that same coupler from both of those companies regardless of what machine we're dealing with. It has become nearly as ubiquitous as the three-point hitch itself and its universal nature gives you a huge variety of things to be able to add to your tractor here that go into the front loader and also open you up into the world of used skid steer implements or things that have been made over the decades for that equipment that can easily pin onto the front of your tractor. These are optional and you will find machines sitting out there on some other dealers lots where they're going to save the three to four hundred dollars that this coupler costs and price a tractor a little cheaper but you have sold yourself short in the long run when it comes to versatility so while this isn't an attachment for your tractor it is absolutely crucial it should be on every machine that you would consider buying my first must-have implement is going to be a set of pallet forks now you kind of funny name here, right? Because you think pallet forks, why do I need those? I'm not gonna move pallets. You're probably not, but you wouldn't believe how versatile these can be. Simply by popping your loader bucket off your tractor and putting your pallet forks on, you now have an inexpensive way to be able to pick up branches and logs and carry them around, uh, move debris and stuff around your yard. I used mine the other day to lift up the back of a four-wheeler so I could change a tire. I've got a, a skids that I use to move firewood around my property. It allows your tractor's loader to become much more of a, a better wheelbarrow, right? Better at carrying things than what you're simply going to be able to do with your bucket. Paddle forks can be really fairly inexpensive. Now, Post pandemic here, we're selling a good quality set of name brand pallet forks now in the seven, eight hundred dollar range for a lower capacity set, reaching up to say twelve, thirteen hundred dollars for a higher capacity from a more premium brand. Um, but for the amount of versatility that you can get out of your tractor by having forks on the front, to me, they're worth every dollar. My next must have implement is a box blade or a grading scraper. Now, these are similar attachments with only minor differences between them, but fundamentally, both of them are going to give you an attachment on your tractor that allows you to smooth and grade things out. Now that can be things like a stone driveway or a yard. I use it for maintaining trails or rebuilding crowns in the middle of the area that my kids ride their four-wheelers back and forth. Uh, but you can do similar work with your loader bucket. You might look at that and you think that's my earth moving tool. But that loader bucket in its four to six to seven foot cutting edge across the front there doesn't do a great job of digging down into the ground and ripping up those compacted soils. The scarf irons that are on these are gonna do a much better job of that. They can dig down and loosen that dirt and then collect all the spoils in the box where it's pulled along behind the tractor and you can feather that out as you go. Again, the investment that it takes in one of these things is pretty nominal, right? This is a simple steel implement. There's not gearboxes and shabs. And so it's a very affordable attachment that again, allows you to address a lot of different chores. Most people when purchasing a tractor are going to have some kind of mowing and maintenance chores to do, whether it's around your home or in your backyard or 
building trails, maintaining fields, you name it, you've probably got some mowing to do. Now, the variety of implements that are out there to do mowing chores are as massive <laughs> in variety as the mowing chores there are to do themselves, right? And we could walk around the yard out here and probably find you half a dozen different implements in order to get that done. But you can break most of those up into a couple of different categories. Rotary cutters like these are gonna be best suited to doing thicker and woodier implements in more rough terrain or flail type mowers are going to have a spinning drum with knives or hammers on the bottom they're going to handle smaller debris and grasses and stuff a little bit better leaving a little bit better finish out behind that when it's done than what a rotary cutter is going to do those flails become more popular here in Essex all the time we're probably selling close to 60 to 70 percent flail mowers to 30 40 percent rotary cutters at this point that's a wild shift that has happened here in the industry in the last several years. Those flail mowers have been really desirable. I own my one myself. I love it. I keep it on the back of my tractor all the time. They are a little bit more costly though than what a rotary cutter is because of the additional gearboxes and belts and drive assemblies that it takes in order to mechanically make one work. We talked earlier about how tractors have evolved over the years and the way that we see them used has changed. The grapples here in front of me are a prime example of that a decade ago these weren't common attachments on tractors and today we're fitting them up with shocking regularity. Um, it used to be that if you were going to do clearing applications you needed a big heavy piece of equipment to do it and we've got big heavy grapples but we also now offer a range of small ones. It's a lot of different variety in grapples depending on the type of material that you're trying to handle but if you're looking at moving around things like logs, firewood, limbs, you're manipulating brush and clearing an area there is no better better attachment to be able to get out there and do that kind of work. Simply by having that skid steer loader on the front and a third function hydraulic kit, you can now operate the cylinders on one of these grapples, making your tractor a versatile clearing tool. Lastly, we're gonna talk about snow attachments for your tractor. If you're like us here in the Northeast, the utility for your machine really continues all year long. And having an attachment for your tractor to deal with snow is really kind of a necessity up here in the Northern states. Now, many people will choose to clear snow with your front loader in your bucket. You absolutely can do that. It works surprisingly well by simply putting your loader up in the float and then kind of scraping that snow off. But if you have a longer driveway or you're trying not to mar your surfaces with a metal edge, there's a lot of other attachments that can be more productive and at surprisingly low cost. Something as simple as adding a push box on your front end loader allows you to be able to clean out large areas and parking areas much better than what you can do with a loader bucket. Blades and snow blowers can be very productive implements if you have to clear larger amounts of snow. These things can kind of really all exist at a variety of price points, right? The smallest push boxes can be down under $1,000 and kind of give you that simple metal iron implement that's never going to break that you can pull out when you get a good snowfall. So keep that in the back of your mind. Not only are we shopping for tractors for that spring and summer and fall work, the implements that you could consider will really extend all year long, including the winter. So this video scratches the surface of the options that are out there for implements for your machine. I link to another video here up above or down in the description to a video that we did earlier, walking through 36 different implements that are out here in our parking lot. But this conversation deserves a place in a buyer's guide, right? If you have a budget and you're shopping for a tractor, leave some room in that budget for a variety of implements. And they don't have to be the most expensive, fancy things that are out there, right? Right? Something like having a simple set of pallet forks to go onto your tractor can make the investment in that machine, that tool carrier, all that much more versatile, right? It can give you so much more utility out of that machine by having those inexpensive attachments in order to go with it. If you're shopping for a piece of equipment and we can help, or if you've got parts of service needs for a machine you've already got, give us a call here at Messix. This is what we do. Available at 800-222-3373 or online at messix.com smoothing out part three in our tractors buyer tractors buyers guide it's so many like s sounds tractor not tractors mm -hmm.